you today we have John in the house and John from Malaysia, my favorite country. John, can you just uh, share about you so people can know more about you? Yeah. Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm John. Uh, I'm from Malaysia. Uh, I did my undergraduate studies. So I, I did my elementary uh, school in China and did four years of high school in Malaysia. And when I was 17, I moved to United States for my bachelor's degree. So I, I was in US for four years. And after that, uh, you know, a year later, here I am, uh, applied for tuning and <laughs> the stars oh. the stars align and you know okay. keep going yeah, right. yeah so actually that's why i didn't really know like uh, you from where because you spoke like i don't know you call like american or british you don't know but then it's really like you went to the, U the u.s and then you still come to the uk so uh, why, why don't you chose to uh, choose you yeah? so why it, you it, so why I chose Chimning, uh, I've always had uh, in the back of my mind. So I know that I need a master's, right? Uh, after like everyone has a degree now, so uh, I, I need a master's degree. Mm -hmm. So you know, Chimning provide this opportunity with very intense uh, one year program. So uh, it, it does help. Uh, in Malaysia, there's a lot of recognition for uh, the Chimning title. So uh, I applied. It was not my first time that I got it. Uh, I, I mean. Uh, I applied twice. Oh! I applied for the 2015 and 16. Uh -huh. uh, I was rejected based on, uh, I think, limited work experience. They just threw my application out and didn't even read my essay. So, uh, so after that, I went. Uh, I went to accumulate more working experience, uh -huh. uh, internship uh, in a PR agency, mm -hmm. and then in 2000, uh, and then I applied again. I got it. For oh. the 2016 and 2017 batch, yeah. So. Okay, so that's what we can learn here. Never ever give up, like you, know, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like it, it's not going to be so, so easy. Uh, like I, I think the best decision people can make is to apply. Uh, oh. By applying, by applying, uh, applicants are giving themselves a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, if, if people just think about it and never apply, yeah. I, they, they never get a chance at all so yep. uh, at least put put your application in uh, and let, and see what their feedback is yep. uh, in, in Malaysia it is extremely competitive uh, ah. we it's I think a five percent uh, su success rate yeah around around that with I think eight eight hundred so uh, eligible applicants mm -hmm. and with 50 55 mm -hmm. or 50 last batch so wow. uh, a uh, tremendous luck is also involved. So well done. It's it's also about you try your best. Like you know, yeah. you grab the opportunity as you said. We we talk about it a lot because a lot of friends like really great that they don't even apply. So mm. if we don't even give it a try, we don't have a chance. So I think it's not only in chivening but any area in life we mm. need to give it a try. And John, like you applied the first time, and you you said that because you lack of experience. How can you know that and what difference between the first and the second time in your application? Yeah. So, uh, first time there was actually a lot of bitter, um, <laughs> because I, I spent a lot of effort in, in drafting the essays and things. Uh -huh. uh, I think I did not know the selection process well enough uh, the uh -huh. first time that I sort of not respected the the result. So they they I, I sent in my application and they told me that I don't have enough work experience. Well, uh, my initial re reaction was that uh, they're so confined to the two years of working experience, yeah. right? So if I don't have that two years, I could be flipping burger for two years and they will at, at least read my application. So th yeah. that's how I initially felt. Uh, but, then, but then I also realized why not turn this into uh, a learning experience? So oh. instead, of, instead of filling that two years gap, yeah. I went and searched for work experience that I wanted. So yeah. I applied for a PR internship and all. And so after the after the year, I applied again with a different mindset. Uh, the mindset of uh, it's not the two years that they they achieving one. The, they want a a more more whole person basically, not just academic, but 
uh, work and leadership, yeah. and there's a lot of factors involved during. And and, and then after uh, the the interviews, the second uh, the face to face interview, then I learn. Uh, then I learn to respect why they say two years of working experience. Yeah. Wow, so, I. So you that, love it. What are you? Let's share so many things to learn from that. You got to share. You yeah. share about respecting the rule of the game. I love breaking the rules, but I believe that you said like, yeah. if we want to get something, we need to respect the game, the rule of the game somehow. Yeah. And yeah. and and also like it's also actually as you mentioned about as a whole person. Wow, it's beautiful. Like not only academic, but I have this kind of mindset of. Making a in impact. Yeah. Mm. So how did you have that mindset? Pardon? How did you have that mindset and that that change the way you look at that experience? How could right. you so learn here? I, I think you know because I've been studying in uh, a lot like four countries so far, mm -hmm. and that gave me the exposure ah. to adapt and to review mm -hmm. uh, and not. You know, and not bring any sort of negative emotion ah. uh, al along with me, because uh, we always have to keep moving forward. So, uh, I, you know, the achievement uh, declined my first application, and that that's it, right? I'm not going back and challenge the decision. Let's <laughs> let's think about how I can do better in the next yeah. uh, the next interview. How how to how to write better essays or yeah. uh, how how to accumulate more experience to convince them. Uh, I th I think I think with that mindset going forward is more healthy than dwelling on the past and yeah. think about what I could have done. Uh, yeah. I mean, those are pointless. Yeah. So so that's that's how. Um, that's how yeah, I, I think that's a big learning for us also. Like always move forward and ask what we can learn from that instead of being like you know bitter and thing like that. So you you mentioned about uh, like don't don't defeat to become success. Actually, you did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Done from this. Okay, so uh, what difference between the the experience from U.S. studying and U.K. studying? I know it's different because you study four years, but now one year. But then, uh, can you share about a bit about difference here? Because they both like really good. You so you U.S. and U.S. and U.K. There's quite a bit of difference, but I, I can't speak for the on the academic front okay. because. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it's one bachelor degree and one master's degree. Mm -hmm. But from what I've heard, um, the U.S. master's degrees takes two years, mm -hmm. and you know, e equally, uh, there, there's the same concern of funding, right? Uh, two years of master's is not cheap uh, mm -hmm. in in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and ne neither is uh, the master's here. But I, I think it's more affordable mm -hmm. uh, in the U.K. Uh, to to pick up. Uh, one year of master degree and then be done with it and move on. Uh, culturally, I think professors professors here are willing to sit down on one on one basis. If you if you email them in advance, uh, you can really book a very very productive session with them and discuss about uh, discuss about that. When I was in the U.S., I think because the, there's just so many more students mm -hmm. to one professor that uh, it was quite difficult to arrange like a office hours. Uh, mostly, I went to tutor for help in the United States. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, if I had a question, maybe they're more accommodating to post grad. I I, I don't know uh, yeah, about the undergraduate, but uh, I I did meet with my dissertation supervisor quite a bit. Uh, so oh. I I guess that was a very good uh, okay. asking them for help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we, we don't it's not really about comparing, it's just about how did you make the best out of the experience. So it's interesting about the point that you mentioned that you can meet your supervisor yep. and one to one and when we talk we we can solve more problems or we can create more ideas. So uh, can you share how did you make the best out of that one year academically or with the university, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So what the, I, I wrote down a couple of things. So uh, it is very important to prioritize. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, in, in, throughout this year, there was two pr uh, priority in mind. The first is time, okay. right? We have one year. Uh, there's only that many, uh, that much time, and it is impossible to finish all the recommended reading. So to oh. s to strategize how you go about 
reading the necessary things, mm -hmm. not not the one most interesting, but uh, the one that's necessary and will help you uh, it, to make your dissertation. Mm -hmm. uh, time is important. And second, I think will be budget. Uh, ah. We 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 only have. I mean, I did. Uh, I I prioritize my budget uh, solely based on how much I get from the stipend. So I, I don't have uh, any additional uh, funding. Mm -hmm. So uh, prioritizing the budget is also important. Uh, so uh, eating out, uh, grocery shopping, and, and that. And I think finding a balance between the second big point is uh, finding a balance between academic and exploration. Mm -hmm. For many scholars, this one year is more than just a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, uh, in, in Malaysia, it is not uncommon for uh, scholars to resign mm -hmm. from a very high position just to, just to give themselves one year of opportunity. So there's this academic exploration and there's also the personal growth. Uh, so, so keep in mind there, there should be a balance and not just focusing on academics. Uh, I think that, that would be very boring um, if, <laughs> if, if, if one year uh, achieving and just all study and reading. Yeah. And it's not actually, yeah. actually not the purpose achieving. They want us to expose and you really like broaden our horizontal. So you mentioned on the priorities. I love that because I believe we, we all have 24 hours, but how we can use our time and prioritize. And also about the budget, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, uh, so, do you have any particular way of prioritize you, you as in like application or, or what is the way, the effective way that you do that? Yeah. So, like pr prioritizing, I think uh, I, I use my smart smartphone a lot. Uh -huh. And on my smartphone, I use Android. There's this notepad feature, right? Every smartphone has a notepad. So, uh -huh. whenever I think of something, I just put it down in the notepad, right? Oh. And that, you know, w w don't don't take for memory for granted because there's so much yeah. going on throughout mm -hmm. the day that if you don't write it down in your smartphone or or, or just write it down, it, mm -hmm. you're gonna forget. So oh, if you yeah. if you remember a an interview or a meeting uh, a essay that you need to write, like put put it down in a notepad and at night just review review what you wrote. Oh. And, and I, I was actually. Uh, maybe I have shorter memory. Some sometimes <laughs> I, I went back to the notes and I see a lot of uh, important things that I have to do. Yeah. Uh, luckily, it's for tomorrow, not for. Today. <laughs> well, I, actually, you know, not not like you, you said about memory, but it's human being. I believe that we often choose the memory, but sometimes it's not one hundred percent true. So we need to capture. Right now. Oh, beautiful! You mentioned <laughs> on that capture the right. knowledge and capture the ideas. So yeah, it's so important. Just, yeah, just write it down. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Uh, just yeah. a, just a key, maybe a keyword that would remind, like yeah. like remind yourself of what, what's that note about. So yeah, and, and I'm bad. I'm really bad with names too. So whenever I meet someone for the first time, I, I put down on my notes. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely because you remember the person. A little time you can call their name. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned on the reviewing in the evening. So do you do like journaling in the evening? And mm. how how does it help you? Yeah. So my my routine is every night I will review mm. like uh, some sort of note. Just glance through it. It's not like. Okay. A serious uh, reflex session, but yeah. <laughs> uh, just just to remind myself. And in the morning, I wake up. Uh, I ask, you know, I ask myself what I appreciate. Uh, like three three things. This what oh, I. Oh, I can hear something personal development here. So where did you learn that? Because actually, if you read a lot of personal development book, they said like study have shown if you start with your gratitude in the morning you actually increase your productivity. So okay. how did you, where did you learn that and how, how it helped you? Yeah. So like th throughout my undergraduate, I've been on uh, the counseling service. I, I've uh -huh. utilized the school counseling service because uh, you, you know sometimes uh, studying alone or overseas can be very difficult. Uh -huh. So uh, having someone to talk to, like my parents are very supportive, but having a professional uh, you know, talk to you about the problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also it, it could it could be it could work for uh, any anyone who who feel that way. And counseling worked for me. So uh, one of the counselor 
uh, here in University of Edinburgh told me uh, a good strategy to uh, to you know uh, lighten up the mood and wake wake up like feeling very positive is uh, the first thing in the morning. Uh, like my alarm would say, you know, ref give give me three things that I appreciate. Something as simple as you know I could uh, wake up naturally without alarm. Yeah. Or uh, you know I, I appreciate the weather today. I can see the sun outside. Like <laughs> Something yeah. very, very, very small. Like, uh, just give appreciation. Uh, yeah. Appreciate, appreciate the the now, mm -hmm. uh, and it it really helps. So that's my two routine things that I do. Uh, one is to review the notes, and uh, first thing in the morning, I I think what I'm, uh, what I appreciate. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that because actually that that's a proven by science that. The morning routine like that, and also in the evening, actually helping you increase increase productivity and also happiness level, and also, you know, because when you when you feel grateful, you cannot be angry or cannot be grumpy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Only you can have one full feeling. Okay, so my friends, do it, uh, check it out, and try that routine that John just share. And uh, what about your? We we go back again for the application. So the second time you apply, do you have any? recommendation for our friends who first applying or second time applying right 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 that, that's very important I've also take down some notes about the chimney process mm -hmm. so you know the the first and foremost the most important part is to read the application carefully oh. uh, everything on the on the application is there for a reason so make sure the applicants read in its entirety and to make sure the expectation doesn't deviate. Uh, so a lot of people maybe have their own uh, perception of what a scholarship is about. So mm -hmm. they apply to Chivney, which doesn't quite work that way. Mm -hmm. uh, people need to learn what Chivney expects. So mm -hmm. uh, read the application requirement very carefully. Mm -hmm. uh, because behind every application is someone that actually read and screen the uh, ap application. You know, not, not just a robot. Uh, it's not a traditional you know, applying for jobs, uh, a robot will, will match all the keywords and stuff. So uh, it, it's very important. So uh, the essay part, just write everything out and ask someone, uh, someone familiar with your character, mm. uh, pick out the best quality. Uh, it, it's important to write out everything. Uh, for, for me, that works for me. Uh, and ask people who are familiar with my character to mm. pick out what, 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 would be suitable uh, in the interview, and I found this very important. Skype someone, Skype a Chimning alumni. Mm. So, I Skype uh, after I get uh, I get call in for the the face to face interview. I Skype a Australian uh, Chimning alumni, mm. and he gave me a lot of good advice. Mm. So, there are three waiting phases. Uh, I'm sure you've been through the same. Uh, the first waiting is the call for interview. Uh, <laughs> after you submit the application, you you just wait every day to uh, for the call for interview. The second wait is for me is the day leading up to the interview. Uh -huh. So the night the night before the face to face. Uh, that 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 uh, I, I wasn't uh, expecting to be so so intense. And the third wait, of course, will be the results, right? <laughs> Uh, I was in the car, uh, in the passenger seat when I received the email. Uh, <laughs> and I freak, I freak, freaked out my parents because my dad was driving at the time. You know, uh, the car almost shaked. So <laughs> no, I shouldn't anyway. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the the advice will be give yourself options. So if you apply for Chivning, that means you want to pursue a master's. Mm. There are plenty of funding opportunities for masters. So do mm. not limit yourself to only Chivning. Uh, there are uh, at the at the time when I'm applying for Chivning, I also looked at Schwarzman scholarship in China. Mm. Uh, uh, in China they, they have also uh, developed something similar. It's like a one year master's program in public policy called Schwarzman uh, scholarship. Uh, so that's worth uh, looking into. And for me there were three panel of judges. Mm. Uh, interview face to face. Uh, do not um, do not. So with with Chimning, do not forget luck too. Uh, mm. 
So that luck is something we can't control. Mm. Uh, and bringing back uh, to what I've told you, mm. the best decision anyone can do is to apply. Yeah. Because by submitting, uh, they are giving themselves a chance. Yeah. So, uh, you know, don't be bogged down if the application weren't successful, mm -hmm. but be glad that we have actually submitted the yep. application. I think that's very important already. Yeah. yeah. So, ah. so I, I think that's uh, that's my advice for the pre pre application phase. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, oh, lovely. So you mentioned that you call the you know ex Shivana. So mm -hmm. how did you find him, and can you give a bit like more insight? Like how did you have that kind of idea, and the process you reach out to him, and what was the main thing that you learned from that conversation? Okay, so uh, the ex chiefner was actually a co coworker of my sister. My sister do consulting, uh -huh. so she gave me the advice of you know before applying to job, before applying to application. Uh, talk to people that are already in the organization, get a feel of what is the day-to-day -day operation. Uh, it's always different uh, from the application front and what people do on a daily basis. So having that conversation is quite important. And also be accommodating to their time. I, I think you know these people could be all over the world and the time zone uh, is a big issue. So uh, keep that in mind uh, when, when calling them. Uh, during the conversation, uh, have have some question, have some real, uh, have some questions prepared. So uh, don't just don't just go in and you know so, sort of like explore uh, what chiefing is about. If if I was applying for chiefing, I will bring specific chiefing application question to them uh, and sort of not not let that interview go to waste. So I, I think uh, after. That comes. I think more than substance is gave. It gave me confidence, uh -huh. knowing that I spoke to uh, a chiefner and they're human. That they're not. Um, they're not some. Like a paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not some uh, superstar or uh, they're not some celebrity. So, like uh, more, more than yeah. I think more than substance. It gave me confidence to go into the interview, and speak like as if I. I'm achiever already. Like yep. Uh, oh, yeah. Beautiful. That is important. I really want to like you know go kind of like say thanks to sharing this point because when we actually inside, as you said, you talk with the person who actually in there, you had that kind of inside information and you position yourself that you are achieving it, and you act upon that, and people can feel and can see that that's like a vibe and generate. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that we need to ask, and we have answers and mm. prepare for that. So lovely. Yeah. After that experience, you enter the interview, yeah. and uh, what happened in the interview? Do you have anything that you you think that you share? Our friends can maybe learn from you. Uh, so I I think. Uh, hold, let me see. Yeah, you take so it. so. You know, uh, I, I believe purpose is very important. Uh, that word, and I'd like to expand. I like to expand on the term purpose. So I, I'm speaking my experience as a 2016-2017 Malaysian chiming scholar. Uh, every scholar is unique, yeah, uh, and expert in their own area. By expert, I don't mean professional qual uh, titles, but their passion, their uh, their passion in their field. So, you hear from many scholars, you know, it's not, um, they've decided to resign from their position three years, five years, just to get this one year of experience. So, uh, a lot of people also sacrifice uh, a lot of uh, mid-career just to, just to join Chiefing. So, they have a huge purpose in, in doing so. Uh, so, during the one year, you know, breaking out of comfort zone, uh, study what they think it will achieve personal growth, uh, meeting people with similar passion, uh, etc, etc. Everyone who applies should identify and 
ask themselves at the at this very moment what their purpose is. Oh. Because although although I, I understand that purpose change through circumstances and time, mm. right? But having to having to express that purpose to the judges shows that you're confident, shows that mm. uh, you you're coming into the interview with a purpose to achieve something. So I think conveying that will, will give you a lot of confidence and will, will make you stand out among other applicants. Yeah. Wow, wow. I am a big fan of Bubba, so when Joan talked about that, I just like, oh my god. Okay, so uh, so important when Joan shared about uniqueness of each person and the passion, the purpose. So how do you define that purpose? Because a lot of friends say want to have purpose in life, and uh, how did you define it? And can you share your purpose or maybe your five years vision? Yeah. Mm. Uh, five years. Yeah, <laughs> I talk about, about how did you define your yeah, purpose? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll give my best try. Now, I think th throughout the interview process, uh, I've thought about you know how I can contribute my own ex unique experience to help out Malaysia uh, uh, in a, in a long in a long run. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a vision, and having the masters give me a. Uh, allow me to develop that vision more clearer. So I've had a pretty robust uh, education experience. I, I've been to many countries and ex talked to many people, make many friends. Uh, I understand this uh, diversity. Uh, I understand different opinions. I, I come to respect different viewpoints. Mm. And I feel this type of exposure, uh, it's a privilege. So for me, I think I'm privileged in able in my parents supporting my education and insisted on going overseas and experience uh, new education and all that. I think that that itself is a privilege, and I want that for Malaysia. What happens with Malaysia right now uh, is a huge, uh, huge concern of brain drain. Uh, the best people are leaving the country for better wages and better system. If people like us do not go back to Malaysia, then who is left uh, to, to, to develop? Uh, brain drain is a serious issue in the developing world. Mm. For me, uh, after you know, being to US, being to UK, I understand these places have battles already fought. So uh, the life, the life in the U.S. and in the U.K. is very good. Uh, they have a very robust yeah. uh, political system, uh, social welfare. Mm -hmm. These are all the things people take for granted, but it was fought for. Mm -hmm. So if if Malaysia if Malaysia were to have similar liberties, uh, say social inequ uh, social equality, and, and all that. It, it would be up to us, people who had that exposure, people who see it differently, mm -hmm. and go back and influence. Uh, so my purpose is to return to Malaysia and hopefully find a way to give the same experience that I had for Malaysia in in the education context, in the cultural context, mm -hmm. uh, in, in mul mul multitude, uh, to make sure that Malaysia Malaysians can also get a similar quality of education at home. Yeah. So so that that's the that's more of a vision, a, a very long term, very sort of uh, I, I idealistic. But but that was what I conveyed to the judges. Yeah. So. Wow. I love that and I don't think it's the idealistic because it's come from your heart and it's really based on your experience and I believe that the sharing of Joan is just like beautiful we we actually think about why Chimney really want us to go back because if yeah. everyone like leave the country yeah. the country will never ever change or not change in the faster way so yeah Joan going to make a difference in Malaysia also and maybe we can do something in Vietnam you know uh, collaborate and create that kind of, you know, collaboration power 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Like Vietnam right now, it's uh, opening up, right? It's yeah, it's really, 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 really massive. Nice. But also having uh, the same problem, uh, maybe it even more because in Malaysia, I think actually has better quality of life. So even yeah. a lot of Vietnamese people go to Malaysia, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and yeah, not talking about Australia or the UK or the US because it's so easy to live in the other country in a way. Very, like, very nice. Having very... like a comfortable life. You're very nice. Yeah. yeah. So, but then, uh, if thinking from the reason why we join this program, maybe if we think about that, we can do something for our country. So, thank John yeah. for sharing that. And it yeah. is really oh, a bit, nice. a bit naive, but I think that's that's. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, that, that's it's you know. True. And it, it, uh, that's why they're looking for people like that. They don't look for people who go to the UK and stay there. They don't want really want that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah a lot, uh, on the Facebook, you see a lot of uh, application. They're like, you know, how how strict is the two year rule? You know, we have to return home uh, for a, you know a minimum of two years or whatnot. I think uh, Chimning is very good in the sense that this is sort of an honor honor basis. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike a lot of employer, they give a sort of a contract. Uh, mm -hmm. The the company will sponsor the. Mm -hmm. Uh, say and say program, but they have to return to to work in the company for two or three years. Mm -hmm. Whereas Chivning took a different approach, is about going back uh, for two years. But ultimately, what they want to do uh, back home. So uh, people should really think about uh, should should really think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, there's no like you know like they're gonna go and kill you or whatever if you leave the country. But it is about, it's like a thought for us, uh, what we can contribute after one year to give back to the country. To mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, then they actually like, actually I attended Erasmus before and I didn't stay in the country long as they, they said. I, I know I didn't want to break the rule, but I could not uh, like, you know, stay because I had like reverse culture shock. And yeah, I went yeah. to Malaysia anyway. It's really close by. Uh, yeah, but then yeah. think think about it like, oh yeah, I kind of like a little bit break the rule at the time. <laughs> but I didn't even know. So and, and it's the world comes talent like you. I mean, yeah. No, I, I not not because I didn't want to contribute because I could I try the business, but it I didn't maybe have um, like a have a right you know pers persuasion because it's really important for entrepreneur. So yeah, yeah. My now, if I do it again, I'm gonna really think about myself. Okay. <laughs> anyway, thank John. So John talking about the personal growth and also the priorities uh, that helping you to make the best of the one year. So I wonder about the personal growth and the academic life. What do you mean by personal growth? You mean traveling or anything else? Yeah. Uh, personal growth, I think, it happens on many fronts. I think. Uh, this one year in particular, I've I've made friends that's gonna last for quite a long time. Uh, I meet uh, people. I, I went to this startup uh, event, and, and I met a couple of people who are like ridiculously passionate about what they they are into, yeah. uh, whatever they're into. So I, I think developing that relationship, uh, it's gonna last last for a while even though it's one year you know uh, I, I did I did not expect uh, a, a, such a robust relationship mm -hmm. can be developed just within one year I guess when it clicks it clicks right uh, uh, it, it's not the time but the, the, the quality of, of, of time and having been uh, this is a master's program it, it really focus on independence mm -hmm. uh, independent work independent study mm -hmm. so juggling that uh, academic and uh, personal exploration is uh, quite important. So I, I do enjoy the train rides. Uh, I feel that the train rides uh, very amazing from What's that? Uh, from Edinburgh to King's Cross. There's the yeah. Virgin East Coast. Yeah. Um, it's very nice, very nice traveling around uh, just to see. And people here are extremely friendly. So so I I, I think uh, on the on the pers personal growth, it, it really open. Open my eye to uh, the people of Scotland, and, uh, people of UK. Uh, yes. this, uh, UK is my first European uh, destination. Oh. I, I've never been to Europe, but this is my, my first time. So, uh, you know, we, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah. 
were sharing about uh, the uh, you, you mentioned of uh, version of you, you mentioned on on going to start up. Yeah, thank you for sharing that because I believe that uh, maybe not many scholars thinking about going to to such kind of like local meetup people. Mm. Uh, it's really like a really good exposure and as if you're thinking about doing something like entrepreneurs, maybe it's nice to check out the local uh, meetup and thing like that. So. Yeah, maybe organize some. So okay, beautiful. So you uh, now now you are going back. So we kind of like uh, finish the application and we finish the studying, and okay. you kind of like prepare to go back. So what what is do you think what important during the time the transition time between now and in next year future? Right. So for for me the I the transition is uh quite quite new to me because I realized that. Uh, there's no more studying anymore. <laughs> like after masters, I don't think I I need I can go for a PhD. Uh, just too too much for me. Uh, so you mentioned don't you have like another advice about school, right? Can you just share shortly about that? Yeah. So uh, just because for evening you have to pick three schools. So you know, strategize your uh, selection. Uh, give yourself options. So the first, I pick King's College London. Uh, second, University of Edinburgh, and the third was University of Westminster. So my top pick, King's College London, rejected my application. Mm. So I got University of Edinburgh, and University of Westminster was my insurance. So always give yourself the third option as insurance. Know that uh, if you get the evening scholarship. You secure a school at least. Uh, <laughs> yeah, at least you any school. At least you have. Otherwise, you have money, but you don't don't have a place to spend. <laughs> okay, so great. Okay, thank you, John, for today. And yeah, you're right. gonna go back and all the best to make a great contribution to Malaysia. And maybe we we'll do something together in Vietnam. Yeah, Malaysia together. yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I I think it, you know, what you do is great. Like uh, just keep keep doing okay, it. And you have. So you have interviewed already 50, who knows, <laughs> the next time we speak, you get hundreds. Uh, <laughs> okay, so maybe we, we keep in touch and I and when you go back to Malaysia, you settle and we're going to have another conversation, yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah no, alright. Okay, thank you, Joe. Nice meeting you, Jen. Thanks for watching, my friends, and don't forget to support the channel by subscribing so I can share with you more tools and techniques in the next videos and put all the tools and techniques into practice to advance your life and share with us what are your tips and download this guide, One Page Achiever, the tool to help you to blend your day, take control of your day to increase your productivity and make sure you grab my book, Non-stop loving, living, and giving every single moment of life. Beautiful story about my sibling and the goal achiever. The ultimate nice step to help you to achieve a personal goal, particularly a full scholarship. And this guy unleash your passion to help you free your mind, free your doubts, free your fears, free your limiting beliefs, to live with passion, with vibrant, with full potential every moment of life i see you in the next videos don't forget to non-stop living meaningfully loving openly and giving joyfully every moment of life love you